So the first thing that you need if you want to do this technique is the Elmer's school glue. Um, this is a PVA glue if you're not in North America uh, and you don't have uh, Elmer's glue. It's PVA glue. It's really easy to find. You can use the white glue or you can use the clear. I've got some clear up here also. It will do the same thing. You can actually even do this technique with wood glue. It'll even work with wood glue. Uh, I find the wood glue is a little bit thicker, so you might have to water it down a little bit with a little bit of water, but you can still get some pretty good crackling with that too if you don't have any Elmer's glue. But the Elmer's glue is my go-to. Okay, we got everybody popping in in the chat. This is so much fun. We've got Sweden, uh, we got Washington, Virginia, California, France, South Africa. This is what I mean. This is so fantastic that people are popping in from all over the world to craft together. Um, let's get right to work because I'm all about learning and or all about teaching you these techniques and so you can learn how to do it yourself. We're gonna move the camera down to the overhead so you can see better. There we go. And we've got Georgia, Missouri, Florida, Arizona. This is so fantastic. And okay, first of all, I'm going to show you, um, I've done a few pieces already to show you what you can achieve. And then I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first things first, this is glass. I have done this on glass uh, and you can see how well it crackles. This is a coat of Elmer's glue and then I put my chalk paint on top of it, let it dry. You can also dry with a heat gun, and this is the crackles that I got. Now, this probably, because I just did this quick just to show you, this probably is not gonna stay on here very well. If you wanna do a crackle on glass, it's best to do a primer coat on your glass first, and then do this technique. So I could have spray painted this with um, some black, put on my school glue, and then put a white paint on top and all those crackles, the black paint would have showed up underneath. Um, uh, the clear glass is not that durable, but it's still kind of fun and you can try that. Uh, the next thing that I'll show you is wood. Here's a piece of, this is just a piece of scrap pine. Eventually I'm gonna turn this into a sign, um, but uh, yeah, it's that simple. I put on the black paint, black chalk paint, put on the Elmer's glue, and then while the Elmer's glue is still wet, you're gonna put on your top coat. You don't want that glue to dry. I'll show you as we go along. And then I put on chalk paint on top of that, dried it, and all your crackles show up. So that's another example. Here's another piece of wood that I did. You can see those great crackles in that. And if you've seen me do the Mod Podge reverse technique for graphics, you can put graphics on top of this and make signs too. So you can have a neat uh, project by doing that. Now this is a more, I had some pieces of trim and I just wanted to show you how well it crackled. Isn't that cool? See all the crackling now? And this is just a real thin crackle and I kind of find that it looks really authentic. It's pretty decent. So you don't need to spend a whole bunch of money on any crackling um, solutions. You can just do it with Elmer's glue. And I was gonna show you, you can even do it on paper. This is just a piece of um, uh, paper out of an old magazine that I had. I put some Elmer's glue down while it was still wet. I painted on some chalk paint on top of it. And look at, I got the crackle on a piece of paper. And this was one that I did a really light coat. And then I put some uh, this is just acrylic paint on top of it and it's hard to see I know on camera But it even crackled really fine fine lines through that one So yeah, that's a few things that um, you can do with this technique um, I was just about to ask what about glass and I showed you the glass uh, what primer do you use on glass? So for primer if you're doing this technique on glass I would just use a paint and primer spray paint or you can use bin spray paint or you can do the technique that I do to paint glass. I have a full tutorial on how to paint glass. Um, if you follow those steps, paint your glass, put on your Elmer's glue, and then do this technique that will work perfect for you. I'll put that uh, tutorial on how to paint, paint glass um, on, 
in the description after uh, I'm finished with this video. Okay, so let's do, I've got some block, a little block of wood here to show you how to do this. Uh, we're gonna use the Elmer's glue and I'm gonna show you how simple this is. We're gonna put the Elmer's glue on the piece of wood and how thick you put it on will determine uh, how thick crackling you get. So I've put quite a thick amount on this. It's probably actually too much. I'm gonna take a little bit off, but you want a pretty good coat and you want it even. Same across that whole piece of wood, okay? And then uh, you don't want this to dry. While it is still wet, I've got some white chalk paint over here off camera. Now the trick with this, with this is you don't want to incorporate the paint into the glue. You want to do long strokes. If you're doing short strokes, you're going to be mixing that glue and the paint together. You're not going to get the crackles. You want to do long strokes and only go over it once or twice if you have to. I need a bit more glue. And take it from one end to the other. And that's it. And then what you're going to do, now I've got my heat gun. What about ceramic tile? You can do ceramic tile too, but you're gonna have to have a primer on top of that ceramic tile. Otherwise it's gonna peel right off. You have to have something that that glue wants to hold on to um, if you wanna do that. So if you have ceramic tile, prime it first with that BIM primer or a paint and primer spray paint and then do the technique and it'll work for you. Now I've got a heat gun. We're just going to, I'm gonna show you how fast this is going to work. It'll be noisy for a second. Okay, see how those crackles are showing up already. We're just gonna dry. Now you don't wanna hold your heat gun too close to it or it's gonna heat up that glue and bubble up. So I'm actually, cause I'm doing this fast on camera, um, this isn't the ideal way to do it. The ideal way would be to let it dry naturally in your craft room or out in the sun, but because we're speeding it up a little bit, the heat gun will work well. And you can see, see how the crackles are all showing up? Can you mix glue and paint together and apply once? No, you cannot mix it together. If you mix it together, you won't get any crackling. You have to put the glue on, don't let it dry, and then put the paint on top of it and don't mix the paint into the glue or it won't crackle. It has to act, lay on top of the glue for it to crackle properly. So how cool is that? So you can imagine the possibilities with this technique uh, for anything that you wanna have that rustic look. If you have a piece of furniture that you wanna have that crackled look on, um, vases, signs, I like using this with, uh, I got a clump of glue there. I like using this on my signs. It just makes a really nice base. Now, that looks pretty good. And you can see the crackle that we've got here. How cool is that? Now, if I was to, I got things on my table here. I'm always a mess in here. Um, if I was to turn this into a sign, I could put my Mod Podge graphics right on top of this. Now, the only thing you have to consider is you can't use very much water when you're rubbing off your, your graphic or it's gonna activate that glue underneath. So if you wanna do a crackle technique underneath a sign, um, you have to be really careful, use a minimal, minimal amount of water and just go in small areas while you're rubbing off your graphic. And it can work, it has worked fantastic for me and, uh, and it'll just give you more of an authentic sign. So that's really easy to do. Um, I'm gonna show you on the glass here, just as an example. So. We're gonna put some glue on our glass, spread it out nice and even. And again, if you're doing this on glass, it's best to have it primed first um, because what will happen is this will just peel right off the original glass, but I'm just showing you this so you can see the technique. So we've got our 
uh, our glue on. We don't want it to dry. We're gonna take our chalk, this is white chalk paint, and we're just gonna brush it on. We don't wanna work it in too much. We're gonna do a long stroke and another long stroke. I'm getting to the bottom of my white chalk paint. I got lumps and bumps in it. Okay, and that's it. So now we'll do, don't roll on me. We're gonna dry it with the heat gun and you will see right away the crackles are going to start to appear. You can pick up this Elmer's glue on uh, Amazon. I've seen it in the dollar store, any craft store. It's really readily available. If you're in another country and you don't have the Elmer's glue, this is just PVA glue. So you could use any type of PVA glue. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you can also use um, wood glue. I've had success with wood glue too. So you can see how fast these crackles are coming up. Isn't this fun? And I love doing uh, different colors underneath to show through the crackle. And if you are doing this on a piece of furniture or a project, uh, after this was completely dry, there we go, isn't that so neat? After this was completely dry, uh, I would seal it up with a polyacrylic sealer that will ensure that it's nice and sealed in there. It's not gonna chip, it's not gonna peel off. And if you put this matte polyacrylic sealer on top of this, um, it's just gonna allow it to be able to be dusted or wiped down with a damp cloth. If you don't put a sealer on top of it, then it's just, it's gonna pick up dirt and it's gonna, because you've got exposed paint and it's not gonna be easy to clean. Okay, what have we got going on in the comments here? The brush you're using for the chalk paint, is that just a cheap, yeah, this is actually, I think this is actually just from the dollar store. Yeah, it's just a cheapy paintbrush. It's a one inch one. I'm so bad with paintbrushes, I destroy them. So I have one paintbrush that I really love, the Wooster paintbrush. Uh, other than that, I just buy the cheap ones from the dollar store and then throw them out after I've like completely destroyed them. So, but if you can get your hands on the Wooster paintbrush, especially the angled one with the rubber handle, fantastic paintbrush. That one is really good, worth the money. Okay, I had this little little vase. I was gonna show you how we could get some crackle on this one. Um, we're going to do the Almer's glue. Walmart, yes, Walmart. You can get a gallon of this stuff at Walmart for I guess $11. I'm in Canada, so our prices are a little bit different but um, it's really affordable, it's not expensive at all. And if any of you have ever bought crackle from paint companies, holy doodle, it is expensive. And I don't find that I get much of a different result than I do with a school glue. So as far as I'm concerned, this works just as well. Okay, we're gonna paint that. Now I can do this whole Thing. It's kind of, this is kind of hard when we're doing live here to do this properly without making a huge mess, but I think I've got the glue all over it. I'm going to, let's do, what have I got here? Well, this is a pretty color. Let's do some acrylic. Now you can use acrylic, um, you can use acrylic paint, you can use chalk paint, you can use latex paint. It's all gonna work for you. It's all gonna crackle for you. Okay, let's, before this dries, we're gonna do long strokes and apply this paint. And don't work it into the glue too much. We're gonna cross our fingers that this is gonna work well. Now this, around the flowers, probably isn't gonna crackle all that great because there's so many little nooks and crannies but we're just kind of slopping this on here. Okay, let's see how we did. We're gonna get the heat gun. And we're gonna start to dry. And let's see if we can get some crackles. 
And this is just a heat gun that I've picked up on Amazon. It wasn't expensive. I think it was $25, $30. Um, and it works really well. You don't need an expensive heat gun to do these DIY projects. And are we gonna get any crackle? Yeah, we're starting to get some crackle. These would be really great to do for Halloween. If you wanted to do a black background with a uh, crackle and then an orange paint on top, that would be really fantastic to do that. It's just kind of one of those things that you just play around with. Are you putting the paint on thick or thin? Um, you have to put, you can, it's one of those things that you can just experiment with. I find that you have to put it on pretty thick or it's not going to crackle as well. If you put a thin coat on, you're going to get light crackling. If you're putting a thick coat on, you're going to get thick crackling. Just play around with it and see, get the feel of it, of what it's going to do. And, and every paint is going to be different also um, and work different. So, so you can start to see how it's starting to crackle there. I've just kind of slopped this on. This is not a, a good paint job at all, but I just wanted to show you the technique. I can go back after and fix it up but yeah so that's creating some really great crackle and you can it's fun using the heat gun because you can watch that crackle appear right before your eyes when I have done crackle before I let the glue dry first then painted and it worked well oh, okay well if you've let it dry first and it worked then that's great too um, but you don't have to. It doesn't have to be dry. I have really good results doing it wet. And I have done it both ways. But I do find that um, you get bigger, thicker crackles when it's wet. If you let it dry, I find that I, I get thinner crackles. So another thing you can experiment with. Try it wet. Try it dry. Try the paint thin, thick. If you've got a big furniture project that you're wanting to do this technique on, Get some pieces of wood, like little pieces of wood, and test your test the different uh, techniques and see what you like best. And then, yeah, so you can see how this created a really fun crack. You can see what I was saying about doing it for Halloween. If you had it black underneath and then the orange or fall decor. But yeah, that crackled pretty good. For a sloppy paint job, we did pretty good on that. Um, okay. Let me know where you're watching from everybody, where we're crafting from today. I'm in Ontario, Canada, and it's so fun watching everybody from all over the world pop on here and craft with me. Okay, watching from Northern Idaho. Thanks for watching. Uh, how do you color the glue to have a different background color? Okay, so to have a different background color would just be your base coat. So because this is black, and then I'm going to put the glue on and then I'm putting the white paint on top. Then you're seeing the black peek through underneath the white. So if I did my base black, I did my glue and then I put an orange coat on top, then you're going to see the black paint peek through that orange paint on top. So that's how you get that different colors. Okay, let's do a piece of paper. I'll show you. So if you're into junk journaling or scrapbooking or mixed media, uh, this is a really great way to create some fun papers that you can do some different techniques on. This is just a page out of an old book that was missing a bunch of sheets and pages that I've been adding into my junk journal. Uh, I need a bit more Actually, why don't we experiment while we're here? I'm going to dry this and then we're going to do the technique on top and see what it does. So let's dry the glue. We'll dry this, then we'll put the paint on top and then we'll dry it and we'll see what happens. Because it won't take very long for this glue to dry. And this is what we are hoping to have this crackle. So this is just a, that same type of paper. I put the glue on, but now this one I did with the glue still wet and then put the paint on top. This one we're gonna dry the glue and see what it does. If you're missing this and you're just catching the tail end of it now, 
Um, this will be live after. You can go back and you can watch it and uh, get caught up. No worries. We're just doing some crackle paint technique with the Elmer's school glue. This is almost dry. Okay. Now I already have my paintbrush. I already have my paintbrush wet with some of this turquoise. So let's just try it. See what we get. Okay. Now we'll dry. Edinburgh, Scotland. Welcome, Carolyn. Let's dry this and we're going to see if it's going to crackle and we'll see what the difference is. Yeah, it's starting to crackle. So you can let this dry also. It doesn't have to be wet. Now, like I said before, what I've noticed is it's a finer crackle. If you're letting that glue dry and then putting the paint on top, it's finer and it's not as, we'll put these side by side so you can see. We'll get this one dry. Almost dry here. So I don't find it, you just have to kind of maybe experiment with it. So this is the one where the glue is still wet and this is one where the glue was dry. Now you can see it's finer crackles not as pronounced as this one so it depends on what you want for your projects if you want a really pronounced crackle then I would do it while it's still wet if you want a thin crackle um, then I would let it dry and then put your paint on top of it so yeah it's just something that you can fool around with and give it a go now I have uh, let's do another block of wood here I'll rinse my paintbrush off um, from Timmins, Ontario. Hello, Karen. Uh, just found what you've been doing. Looks very, yeah, we got lots of people from Ontario and Canada here popping in and that's really fantastic. Thanks for joining around and uh, joining in here and crafting with me today. Okay, Elmer's glue. Spread it on your project. The thicker you put it on, the thicker you're going to have for crackles. The thinner you put it on, the thinner the crackles. So that's pretty even. Let's rinse our paintbrush out here. Got my paintbrush all dry. Actually, I have some orange. Let's do some orange and I'll show you what I was talking about for the Halloween theme. Okay, this is just acrylic paint. We're gonna do some long strokes. There we go. Put it on quite thick so we can have some thick crackles. And we're just going to dry it. And like I said before, you can let this air dry. You can put it out in the sun and it'll dry for you. Just because we're doing a live here, I'm kind of speeding it up a little bit. but we're gonna get this dry. And I just realized this is gloss, gloss acrylic paint, but it should crackle still too. I put on quite a thick coat though, so it might take a bit of drying. How about spreading the glue over a stencil and then painting? Yes, wouldn't that be? That would be really cool um, if you did that. I'm just trying to do, I'm trying to, get some things out of my drawer here. So I wonder if you used a stencil. So she was saying spreading glue over a stencil and then painting over it. I got a piece of wood. Let's try that after we get this one going. This one I put on really thick. I don't know what I've got going on here. This one is not cooperating and I'm wondering if it's because it's the gloss acrylic paint. It might not work. It might have to be just regular acrylic. It's still made kind of a, a neat pattern. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that one's gonna work. And I never noticed that this is a, a gloss acrylic. It's not a plain acrylic paint. That might be a fail. So we're gonna put that one aside. But 
I don't know if this will, let me see. If you could put on, now we're really, it, the glue has to dry first. No, you can use it. I like to do it while the glue is still wet. Now we just showed an example. You can catch it if you go back and you watch. Um, this is while the glue was wet and this is while the glue was dry. It's quite a different, uh, it's more of a, a smaller crackle. If you let it dry first, this is when it's wet. So it really depends on what you want for your project to fool around with. But uh, you can do both options. You don't have to do either. Now this is probably gonna be a mess because I don't have any spray adhesive underneath my stencil, but I don't think this is going to work the way that I'm doing it because once we, well, no, because if we dry, oh my goodness, I've gone down a rabbit hole here. The only way that you could do this is if we dried it first. Help me out if you're here in the comments what how you would do this technique because I'm thinking if we have to dry this because if we leave it wet as soon as we're painting our paint on it's just going to spread the glue around so let's try let's try this we're going to try if not we're just going to have a real crackled piece of wood okay we're going to peel this off we're going to dry it it's definitely going to give you some um, texture. I don't think it's going to work. I got to um, I got to rinse my paintbrush here. Hang tight with me. Or no, I can use my white. I got white here on my paintbrush. We're gonna paint over top of that. Let's see what it does. All of these little projects like this are great for junk journaling or mixed media. Nothing like trying something live and seeing if it's gonna work or not. I don't know if this is gonna crack or not. I don't think we had enough glue on there. Starting to crackle a little bit. Very fine crackle. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. Can't see the stencil. The stencil was kind of useless underneath there, but it definitely did create some crackle. See that? That's a really good crackle. So, okay, so here's the difference again. I can show you. So, this is crackle while the glue was wet. This is crackle while the glue was dry. So, there's your comparison. If you want, this actually is really good. This one looks really good. So, again, determining on the determination of which one you use would be what you wanted your project to look like. I like that one. That one, um... Uh, Terry asked if there is a difference between a hair dryer or a heat gun. Oh, so the hair dryer and the heat gun? Absolutely not. There's no difference. The only difference would be your force of air. So when you're using a heat gun, it's blowing out heat. It's not blowing out a gust of air. So if you're using a hair dryer, you just have to really hang on to it and make sure that you have it held back far enough that it's not blowing your paint around. Um, that's the biggest thing that you would have happen with a uh, hair dryer. Is it moving the paint around and not and because it's gushing out so far so fast? So a, a heat gun actually is probably a better option when you're doing stuff like this. Um, does she mean crackle and paint while the stencil was on? Yeah, I you know what that would be just something that you'd have to play around with, and this probably was not an ideal stencil because it's very intricate, so there wouldn't be a lot of room to crackle, but even still, it still kind of turned out. Kind of cool something you just play around with i would do the glue to get the crackle and then paint over the stencil so you could do this technique and then put your stencil on top of it do i have what do i have here 
let me see. Let's give this a go. Let's see if I can find a, I got some blue here. Put out a little bit of blue. So then you can do this. Take the stencil. Let's see what we can get going on here with the crackle underneath. I think this is actually going to look really cool. I need a bit more paint. And let me know down in the comments if you guys have ever tried this technique with the Elmer's glue or if you've bought store bought and product and had good results with it. Like I said before, the store bought and um, products, they work well but they are super expensive. So if we can get something to work that's pretty comparable and a cheaper option, I'm all about that. I'm all about crafting affordably. So let's see what we got here. I'm gonna dry this a bit before we pull it off. I would do the glue to get the crackle and then paint over the stencil. That's what, yeah. I, I make everything look so easy. It's not always so easy. I have lots of stuff that behind the scenes that I, I have a complete mess. Okay. Oh, look at that. So we've got the crackle underneath, the stencil on top. That almost looks like a Moroccan tile. You know what I mean? Like the white, that looks really cool. Um, but yeah, and you can still kind of see the crackled paint underneath. I'll show you the difference. Let's do a little bit on this one. And with the bigger cracks, I'll just do a section here. We'll just do this main little piece here. And that's, you can see the crackles through a bit more with the, um, the bigger crackles. But yeah, so that's an option for sure. And I would take my sander, I would sand all around the edges. I would turn this into a little shelf sitter. That kind of is, is cool. Um, when I did the, the dry method first, I painted the glue with up and down side to side strokes, made the crackle a little more intense. Yeah, like the more glue that you put on, the thicker of a crackle you're going to get. The thinner that you put it on, the thinner a crackle you're gonna get. So it's all just something that you just can play around with. So like these pieces, I did a very thin crackle on it, or a very thin layer of glue, sorry, and we got nice thin crackles. This one, I put a very thick coat of glue and we got the thick crackles. This one too, also very thick and we got great big thick crackles, opposed to a thin coat of glue and you get the thinner crackles. So it all just depends on, whoops, on your project and um, what you're trying to achieve. This is on that little vase. And then we have our crackle on our glass. So there you go, all kinds of options. So now you have something that you can work on this afternoon and experiment with. Get out your Elmer's glue, Give this crackle technique a try and um, let me know what you're creating. If you make a project doing this, send me your pictures over on Facebook or Instagram and uh, give us some inspiration. That would be fantastic. Um, if the stencil wasn't intricate, it had a bit more of a surface. Yeah, I think if, yeah, that's right. If, if it wasn't so intricate, I probably would have been able to get more of a crackle through it. But then again, experiment and see what works for you. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed today's pop-in um, live video and you've learned a new technique or you can learn some new tips and get some inspiration. And I appreciate all your support here. So thanks for joining and uh, we'll see you really soon in the next video. Take care everyone.